Hi, welcome to this introduction to the Monte Carlo method for schedule analysis. So we will look at this method and we will uh, find out when to use Monte Carlo analysis uh, and what type of answers can it provide us when we're looking at uncertain schedules. So let's get started by looking at a typical uh, network. So in this network we have six activities and each activity has a single duration and this is typical of a CPM network. In a CPM network the duration of an activity is uh, deterministic which means we know the duration and all we need to do and then do is use, use a forward pass and a backward pass to compute the early and late dates, the source and the total project duration. So running this calculation we can see that the um, Schedule will take about 40 days to complete and we have the uh, floats, we know the critical activities are A, T, A and F, uh, so this is pretty straightforward. Now what uh, happens is that um, you could have a schedule that has uh, uh, variable durations and this could be something like a design work. So when you are doing design work, you don't have one duration but you can have an estimate of duration. So something can be a, a, a very optimistic um, idea of how long the task will take, a likely idea and the, um, a pessimistic idea of it. So if we now add those three point estimates to the same schedule, we have a completely different uh, problem. We now have um, six activities and each activity um, has uh, estimates of durations that can vary between uh, for instance A can vary between 5 to 12 days uh, 8 is likely but if you can get any duration between these uh, this range same happens with all of the other six activities so how do we compute the schedule for this well we could try to do a permutation try every possible combination of durations but this would be like it's almost, uh, you know, it's take a huge amount of time to compute all these uh, probabilities. One shortcut that people do is, is called uh, using the PERT duration. A PERT duration is basically a formula that takes the three-point estimate and turns it into a single value. So the PERT duration is uh, formula is uh, you take the uh, optimistic uh, value four times the likely plus the pessimistic and divided by six. So that gives you a third duration. And then use, instead of the three points, you use the third durations to use the, to calculate the schedule using the standard forward and backward pass. So in this case, if we put in the third values, you notice that we now have a scheduled duration of 42 days. You know, earlier we have got 40 days with CPM, and now we have 42 days. Um, you could do other uh, trials and you can say, oh, okay, let me just pick up all the optimistic uh, durations. And if you did that, you would get uh, 28 days. If you, uh, you know, use the likely or the CPM, you get 40 days. If you use BERT, you get 42 days. And if you use pessimistic durations in the schedule, you get 61 days. So the question is, which one is the correct answer? Which one should you use? Um, if you we really don't know which is the correct answer. We can't tell. But what we could do is we could use the, um, a sampling to figure out what is the likelihood of achieving any one of these durations. That is something that we can do. And that's really the, what the Monte Carlo method is. So, so instead of computing all the possible combinations of durations, uh, you know, what we do is we um, uh, we calculate, um, you know, we, we take a random number, random guess, use that random number and the triangular distribution to um, pick a duration for each activity. Um, use that to calculate the schedule and then keep repeating this. And each time we're doing a random sample okay, of the overall uh, duration space for this schedule. So, 
if you repeat this, uh, keep repeating this, you would start getting um, a fairly good idea of uh, the range of durations that the, your schedule can show. Okay, so let's see. Now a little bit more on the triangular distribution. A triangular distribution basically looks like this. It's a simplified distribution in that that um, uh, the A represents the optimistic, so no duration can be less than optimistic. B represents the pessimistic duration, so no duration can be greater than B uh, or the pessimistic. And C is the likely, so the most frequent duration that we will encounter is C, which is the likely duration. So this is the distribution of frequencies for a triangle distribution. Now using a triangle distribution on the same schedule that we looked at earlier, if you look at the schedule, uh, we have three the range estimates over here, the optimistic, likely, and pessimistic. We pick a random number, okay, and use that random number to then uh, select the duration using from the triangular distribution. So you see here that the duration for A randomly in this round is 7, B is 10, C is 12, and so on and so forth. At the end, we've computed a total project uh, schedule duration of 46 days. This is round number one. You repeat the same round. So here, I repeated the same rounds, so and you can see that the first one was 46, and then keep going. Um, then we have 1,000 runs and for each run what we're looking at is what is the total project duration that we got during this run. If you look at the summary of results after this analysis we see that the minimum in, in this 1,000 runs the minimum that we got was 36 days the average is 45 mode which means the most frequently seen duration is 44 days and the maximum is 53 days. Notice it's interesting that uh, the minimum that we got in this uh, sample of 1000 runs is 36 while the absolute minimum that we would get when everything was at optimistic would be 28 days. Uh, so we didn't hit 28 days in this 1000 runs and that is expected because you, if you're randomly generating duration uh, for each one of these six activities, the likelihood of you getting the the most optimistic for all six of them together is pretty low. The same thing is true for getting all uh, six of them to be pessimistic, which would have given us 61 days. So it's low also. Okay. So now that it comes to using this data. So the way we use this data is that we take, uh, we prepare a histogram. And in this histogram, you can see that I have ranges of what is and, and a percentage so uh, the percentage chance of uh, 36 to 38 uh, days is 2 percent the percentage chance for 38 to 40 days uh, is 13 percent so each one of these represents the frequency and 44 to 46 days is 28 percent let's see how we can now use this to answer the questions so what if we are saying, what is the probability of finishing exactly in 42 to 44 days? To find this probability, we would look at the bar that represents the frequency for this, pro uh, for this duration. So the bar for 42 to 44 days shows that it has a likelihood of 18%. Okay. So we can say that there is an 18% chance that the project will finish between 42 and 44 days. Okay. Uh, what is the chance that we will finish this project in the PERT duration? Remember the PERT duration that we computed is 42 days. So what we have to then say is, what, is, what the question that we are asking is that we want the total probability that this project will finish in 42 days. So it's not just the bar which is 40 and 42, it's also the bar which is behind earlier which is 38 to 40 and 36 to 38. So we add all three of these bars and we get 32%. So that means there's a 32% chance that the project will finish within 42 days. Okay. Next, we can ask the question, uh, what if uh, we want to pick a duration where we have a 90% chance of completion? So to get to the 90% chance, you start adding the bars to get, did you get 90%? So two plus 13 plus 17 plus 
18 plus 28 is 90 percent so that takes us to uh, the 46 to 48 part which means uh, that we can be 90 percent sure that the project will com be completed in 48 days so in conclusion um, uh, what we found here is this that we when we have uncertainty in the schedule we can't be sure uh, of a, a firm answer and say that the project is going to be completed on a certain date in a CPM schedule yes we can do that but not when we have a three-point estimate but what we did do instead with the uncertain schedule is that for any given date we can we can compute the probability of finishing on that date so that is how an uncertainty uh, affects a schedule you don't have specific dates you have a date and a probability so you have a set of dates and probabilities and which represents the effect of uncertainty on the schedule okay i have um, an excel sheet with this which, which i will be posting uh, in the comments area you're welcome to upload that uh, sheet and try out some of these calculations also thank you